Good morning. We welcome you in Jesus' name to our service today on this Memorial Day weekend. We're thankful that you've joined us in, to worship the Lord and to exalt Him. Uh, let's begin by singing the chorus, The Family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Joy dares with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Our opening scripture today is taken from Psalm 27, verse 1, where the psalmist says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you, and we pray that our hearts would be united together wherever we are, united together to exalt your name. And I pray, Lord God, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. So bless the words that we sing. Uh, may it be an expression of our hearts and of our spirits. Lord, bless us as we listen to your word. May we respond to the word in faith and obedience. Build faith in our hearts as we hear your word today, O God. And I pray that you would be exalted among us. Thank you now. Enjoy this time, Lord, and I pray that you'd be enthroned upon the praises of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our responsive reading is taken from Psalm 95. Psalm 95, it's the entire chapter. There are some parts we love to sing or love to say, but the last part especially is a warning to us. So be careful as we read it, as uh, God speaks to us in Psalm 95. Oh, come let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the days of trial in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my work. For forty years I was grieved with that generation, and said, It is a people who go astray in their hearts, and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. God bless the reading of his word today. Our first song together is, I Will Praise Him. Wash away each sin. 
Glory, glory to the Father, glory, glory to the Son, glory, glory to the Spirit, glory to the Three in One. I will praise Him, I will praise Him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain, give Him glory, all ye Thank you for joining us in singing. Before we turn to the message of the morning, I'd just like to take a moment on this Memorial Day weekend to thank all of those of you who have served in the military. Uh, the old saying goes that all gave some and some gave all. And we know that Memorial Day is specifically remembering those who gave their life for the sake of our country and for our freedoms. And so we want to say thank you to those people and thank you for their service and their willingness to sacrifice and especially those who gave their life for the sake of our country. It is a reminder to us of our Savior who gave his life so that we could be freed from the bondage of sin. And those men and women gave their life in order that our nation may be free. And we want to remember them this week. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn with me to John, the first chapter, beginning with verse 29 through 51. John chapter 1, verses 29 through 51. Before I read the passage of Scripture, I, I found this little um, article. It was actual letters that were written by children to a pastor. So I thought for the next uh, three weeks I would read just a few of these. Uh, First one is from a, a little boy named Arnold, age 8, from Nashville, Tennessee. He said, Dear Pastor, I know God loves everybody, but he never met my sister. Yours sincerely, Arnold. Stephen, age 8, from Chicago. This obviously isn't my Stephen, but another Stephen said, Dear Pastor, I would like to go to heaven someday because I know my brother won't be there. Dear Pastor, say in your sermon that Peter Peterson has been a, a good boy all week. I am Peter Peterson. Sincerely, Pete, aged nine, from Phoenix. Dear Pastor, my father should be a minister. Every day he gives us a sermon about something. Robert Anderson, age 11. And, Dear Pastor, I'm sorry I can't leave more money in the plate, but my father didn't give me a raise in my allowance. Could you have a sermon about a raise in my allowance? Love, Patty, age 10, from New Haven. All right, we'll read some more of those next week. Children have a funny way of asking God questions and asking pastors questions. All right, John chapter 1, beginning with verse 29 and reading through verse 51. This is the first chapter of John, and really it's about Jesus calling some of the first of his disciples. And um, it's about that and about some of them specifically but my message today is entitled, Word of Mouth Christianity. Word of Mouth Christianity. So let's read. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said to him, and said rather, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel, therefore I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Again the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, when translated, Teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and remained with him 
that day. Now, it was about the 10th hour. It's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now, when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. And he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, thereafter, hereafter, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word today and we pray your blessing over your word. We pray that we may rejoice in what you did in calling your disciples, but I pray that we may see ourselves in this passage as people of God who have heard your voice have followed you, and have gone to find someone else to tell the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are thousands, maybe even millions of companies that spend uh, a lot of money in order for them to gain your business. I was reading about the Super Bowl and how much money it cost for a commercial on the Super Bowl. The last figures I had were for the 2020 Super Bowl, and a 30-second commercial cost, get this, $5.6 million. $5.6 million for 30 seconds of commercial time. And they're willing to pay it. They're willing to pay it because they think that their advertisement will cause you to come to them and buy whatever they're selling. Now, all of us, I think, have been involved in having someone tell us about something that they have used or someone they have had do work for them. And all of us know, you could answer this question, uh, the best type of advertising is what? The best type of advertising is what? We all know that the answer is word of mouth. Word of mouth advertising. Somebody did some work for me. I was pleased with what he did. And, oh, you need the same type of work? Okay, you can use him. I used this product and it solved my problem. So if you use it, it'll probably solve your problem too. I simply take the testimony of someone else and I run with it because they were pleased or on the opposite way, they were displeased and so never used that product. Well, in our passage of scripture before us today, I mentioned before that my sermon title is Word of Mouth Christianity. And we're gonna talk about word of mouth. That not only is the best advertising by word of mouth, but, but the best witnessing is also by word of mouth. We've probably all watched a, a Billy Graham crusade seen him on television. He, does, he did a wonderful job. His son, Franklin Graham, now has evangelistic meetings. Uh, another great evangelist, Luis Palau, just died a few uh, months ago. And that would be like a mass evangelism uh, attempt. There would be uh, evangelistic meetings in a city. Well, that's one means of, of getting the message out. But again, I would say to you that the best witnessing is by word of mouth. 
So let's look at this. I have three things to say. First of all, word of mouth testimonies of Jesus, and then word of mouth networking of the men Jesus called, and then finally, word of mouth Christianity today. First of all, then word of mouth testimonies of Jesus. There are several of them as we find this in this passage of scripture. The first one we would say was given by John. This is John, not the writer John, but John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, we are, have recorded in verse 29, when John saw Jesus coming toward him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. One of the greatest testimonies about Jesus and his work for us, that he was going to be the one God would use to take our sins away. Jesus would die on the cross as God's Lamb to take away our sin. But John had something else to say about Jesus as well. At the end of that little section, verse 29 through 34, Jesus, or rather, John said of Jesus, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So John had witnessed himself, and he had, the, the Lord had told him, Listen, whoever you see the Spirit descending upon and abiding on, that's, that's the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And so John knew that this Jesus was the one God had called, and one that, that he would see to be the testimony, would testify rather, that he was the Son of God. And John said, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. So John calls him the Lamb of God. He calls him the Son of God. Now as we go on, we're going to find the second testimony is given by Andrew. Andrew, uh, it says, in verse 41, he first found his own brother Simon and he said to him, We have found the Messiah, that is to be translated, the Christ. The Jewish people, even to this day, those that have not accepted Jesus as their Savior, are still looking for the Messiah that is promised in the Old Testament. And certainly in the time of Jesus, these people knew the stories of what the Messiah was going to be and Andrew was bold enough to say, when he talked to his brother, he said, we have found the Messiah. Wow, what a testimony. All right, the third testimony is a testimony of Philip. It says about Philip in verse 45, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. So Moses and the prophets wrote about Jesus, and that's what Philip gave as testimony of Jesus to Nathanael. All right, the last of the four testimonies, word-of-mouth testimonies, is given by Nathanael. Jesus meets Nathanael, and he says, uh, Look, indeed, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. And Nathanael says, How do you know me? Jesus says, Well, before Philip called you, and while you're under the fig tree, I saw you. Now, I'm not exactly sure what that means. There must have been something that Nathaniel was doing that only Jesus could have known about. No one else knew but Nathaniel himself, but Jesus knew too. So it caused Nathaniel to think, how did he know this about me? And his testimony in verse 49 is this. Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of of Israel. Now that's a, a quick summary, it's a, a quick conclusion that he came to about Jesus, that Jesus simply testified that he knew Nathaniel before Philip ever called him. And Nathaniel comes to the conclusion that Jesus is the Son of God and he is the King of Israel. Now verses 50 and 51, Jesus gives a response, that's a whole nother sermon. Uh, and we'll deal with that maybe another time. But um, we see four testimonies. John's, Andrew's, Philip's, Nathaniel's of Jesus. And what we see is in each of their testimonies, we see part of the uniqueness of Jesus in these varying testimonies. I mean, he's the Lamb of God. He's the Son of God. He's the Messiah. He's the one of whom Moses and the prophets wrote about. He's the king of Israel. And then Nathaniel says a second time, like John said, he's the son of God. All these titles of Jesus, all these things we know about Jesus, and we know Jesus is this unique one. He is the only begotten son of God. 
He is the anointed one. He is Messiah. He is Christ. There is none like him. And all of these men have given word of mouth testimonies of Jesus. Secondly, what about word of mouth networking of these men? Now here's what happened. Let's start with verse 35. Verse 35, it's John, and he has disciples. So verse 35 says this, Again the next day John stood with two of his disciples. We know one of them, we don't know who the other one was. Uh, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. It's repeating what he had said the day before. Not as much, not as uh, many words, but he says, Behold the Lamb of God. Verse 37 says, The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Can you imagine? You have two disciples. He had more than two, but these specific two, John speaks about Jesus, and when he says something about Jesus, they leave John and follow Jesus. And one of those two, the Bible says, is Andrew. Verse 40 says, one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew. All right, so here's what happened. John told Andrew about Jesus. And Andrew followed Jesus. Now the third thing in Andrew's life was this. Verse 40 said, uh, one of the two that heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Verse 41 says this, and he first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah. So, Andrew told, or rather, John told Andrew, Andrew followed Jesus, and then Andrew found and told his brother Simon Peter. All right, the second testimony here is in verse 40. Uh, 43. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. So here's what happened. Jesus called Philip. Philip followed Jesus. And then Philip found and told Nathaniel. All right, so what do we see in these stories? We see the story with John and Andrew. We see the story with Jesus and Philip. What's the basic pattern? The basic pattern is these men heard the message, first of all. Secondly, they followed Jesus. And thirdly, they went and found and told someone else. So that leads us to our third point here. The networking that goes on in this passage of scripture is illustrated on how and is an illustration of how we ought to be part of God's word of mouth Christianity. Word of mouth Christianity today looks like this, that every one of us has what we might call a sphere of influence. A sphere of influence. There's a, a Greek word, oikos, which is like your household. Uh, it, it is your friends. It is your relatives. It is your associates. It might also be your neighbors. And right now, I'd just like for you to, to spend a moment just thinking about who would be in your sphere of influence. Might not be in anybody else's in our church. And if you live in another part of the United States or in Canada, then obviously your sphere of influence is going to be different than someone else's. If you live in Tamiami Village, then some of the, these people might overlap between some of our people. But you have a sphere of influence that other people don't have. And God has placed them in your life specifically so that you can touch them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Friends, relatives, associates, and neighbors. There's a great story in the book of Acts. I won't turn there. But it's the story of when Peter was told by God to go and minister to someone named Cornelius. It's the story when, Jesus, or when Peter had the actual sheet come down and there was unclean animals and God said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter came to the conclusion by the, by the 
prompting of the Holy Spirit that God was going to minister not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles. And what had happened was, when Cornelius had called Peter to come, the Bible says that Cornelius had gathered his household. Oikos is the word in, in Greek. He had gathered his household. There was a large crowd of people there. These were all the people that Cornelius had influence over. He had probably his relatives there. He may have had some of his friends. Probably he was uh, uh, well-versed in, and he had people that were his associates at work and some of his neighbors. And he called them all there. And when Peter preached, the Holy Spirit fell on these people. And God allowed the Gentiles to be part of his kingdom. But it was all because Cornelius had gathered these people so that they could hear the message of the gospel. All right, so in this passage of scripture, this is like a one-on-one -on -one thing. This wasn't a whole household. This was, this was um, John telling Andrew and Andrew going and finding and bringing Peter to Jesus and telling Peter about Jesus. Now, his name wasn't Peter. His name was Simon. Jesus gave him the name Peter. It was Jesus calling Philip, and after Philip following Jesus, he going and finding Nathaniel and telling Nathaniel about Jesus. So, word of mouth, Christ, word of mouth Christianity today is really one on one testimony of Jesus. When I'm happy with someone that did work for me, if I'm happy with a product, I'm going to tell my one friend. Now, he may tell some others as well, but he may then take my testimony and use it so that he can use that product or use that person. Word of mouth Christianity is for us to recognize that we have experienced salvation through Jesus Christ. We have experienced the joy of knowing God. We have experienced in a small way, who Jesus is, just like these men said, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, the King of Israel. All, we have experienced Jesus for ourselves personally. And because we've experienced him personally, then it is ours to tell someone else about Jesus. Andrew went and found his brother and told him about Jesus. Philip went and found Nathanael and told him about Jesus. So let me ask some questions. This is about experiencing Jesus personally. First of all, I would say if the pattern is this, that, that these men heard the message, that they followed Jesus, and that they went and found and told someone else, I would ask you this question. The first question is, have you heard the message? You personally, have you heard the message of Jesus? Has the fact of understanding that you are a sinner in need of a Savior and that Jesus came to be the Savior of the world, he came that he might die on the cross in order to set us free from our sin and to cleanse us from our sin by his blood, that we might have eternal life because we put our faith in him, and we will spend eternity with him in heaven, fellowshipping with him, and knowing God in a personal way. Have you heard that message? And if you've heard that message and responded personally, then have you followed Jesus? Have you followed Jesus? The essence of discipleship is that when these men heard, they followed Jesus. When John told his two disciples, they turned from John and followed Jesus. When Jesus called Philip and said, come and follow me, he did. Jesus calls every one of us to follow him, to follow him. One of the most beloved passages in the scripture is the 23rd Psalm. And it talks about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. I love that part of that passage. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. That God, 
our great shepherd, leads us. And if he leads us, then we're following him. And that's what Jesus is calling to all of us today, that once we have heard the message, that we follow him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come, come unto me, Jesus said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So, have you heard the message? Have you followed Jesus? Now the third question, and that is this. Have you told someone else? Have you told someone else? Have you found someone and told someone else? Certainly there is someone in your sphere of influence. Certainly God puts into your path sometime in your life. Someone who needs to know the message of Jesus. And we are his witnesses. That's what Jesus said to the disciples in the first, book of, first chapter of Acts. You will be my witnesses. right? You, you receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. We will testify to the goodness and the grace of God. We will testify to the saving grace of God. We will testify to the opportunity that we have to follow Jesus and others may hear and follow him as well. In our passage of scripture this morning, we see that when Andrew found Peter or Simon, that Simon joined Jesus. And when Philip told Nathaniel that Nathaniel also followed Jesus. And the biblical pattern of word of mouth Christianity is simply this, that when we have opportunity to tell others about Jesus, that God will work in their hearts and they'll follow Jesus as well. Now, we can get hung up on the fact that uh, I'm too afraid to say something about Jesus. Uh, I don't know what to say. Well, certainly you've experienced Jesus. You have something to say about what he has done in your life. And your personal testimony can be the means by which God uses his spirit to bring them to Jesus. Now we have to understand that we don't convert anybody. I, I've never converted anybody. But the Holy Spirit, right? He is the one who convicts. He is the one who confirms his word in men's and women's heart. And so we trust that God will be at work by his spirit. And as God leads us, let us be word-of-mouth testifiers of the grace of God in our life. Just as Andrew, just as Philip was faithful in hearing the message and following Jesus and telling someone else, help us to be those same type of believers that have heard the message have followed Jesus and are in the business of telling the story of Jesus and his gospel. What a joy it is to know that we have opportunity not only to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, but also to be a testimony and a testifier of his grace in our life. God bless you as you uh, practice word of mouth Christianity. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today, and we pray your blessing over this word to our hearts. Thank you that we see these men receiving the message of the gospel, hearing it, and following Jesus, and then finding someone else and telling them about him as well. Help us to have the same excitement of bringing the message of Christ to those around us. And Lord, I pray that you would remind us Remind us of those who may be in our sphere of influence that we can touch with the gospel of Christ. Thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to take some time to pray. I'm going to pull up my prayer requests. But um, one thing I would encourage you in your life, and that is maybe God by his spirit is prompting you right now about someone who you know that doesn't know Jesus as Savior. And God would like for you to be the one who tells him or her 
of Christ. Now, I would encourage you, this is another message again, but we can begin to pray even before we ever say anything to anyone about Jesus. We can pray for that person, that their hearts would be open to the gospel. And we can pray that you, God would give us opportunity. And then as the Holy Spirit prompts us, we can say something to them about Jesus. And we can see the kingdom of God grow as the kingdom of God becomes part of that person's life. They surrender their heart and life to Jesus Christ. So God bless you as you, as you are one who spreads the word by word of mouth. Amen. Okay. Let me find my, uh, my prayer request here. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you today for the privilege of prayer. And Lord, we know there are many requests that we would have. First of all, we would pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We know there's still unrest. They've had a ceasefire there, but there's still unrest in the Middle East. And we pray that you would be at work in that place. Lord God, I pray for those in authority over us in our own nation, for President Biden, for the Supreme Court, for the Congress. We pray for our governor, Governor DeSantis, for the Supreme Court of Florida, for the Congress of Florida. I pray for John Gunter, the mayor of Cape Coral, and Kevin B. Anderson, the mayor of Fort Myers. Bless them as they lead our, our cities, our state, our nation. Give them wisdom from on high, Lord, and I pray they might not reject you and reject your word, but they might govern in a way that is in, in accord with your word. Lord, today I would, would pray also for those in our fellowship who have had issues, uh, especially health issues, I continue to pray for Judy Jones, for Bev Padley, for Wesley Nicholson, for Dorothy Thomas, for Dan Reisner, for Marty Topper's daughter and granddaughter, for Weston White. We pray for the family of Robert Reichard. We pray for Ginny Paul. We pray for Bill Decker's granddaughter, Hazel. I pray for Judy Mason. She continues to recover from her surgery. Lord God, for Sequoia Smith, you know there are many requests that we would have. I would pray for our friend Danielle Wilson as she recovers from surgery, uh, for Dawn's aunt as well. We pray, Lord God, that you would bless them and uh, you would touch them. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would give um, full recovery as they recover from these surgeries, these different people. I would pray for healing, Lord. I would pray for uh, increased eyesight. Lord God, I want to thank you that we can bring these requests. I know there are others that people have on their hearts. I would pray today, as we think about being missionaries, we think of our missionaries that we support, for the Caleros, I pray for them as they minister in South America. Lord God, I pray, or in Central America, I pray, Lord God, that you would bless them. And Lord, I pray that you would also cause us to be your missionaries. As we have um, experienced personally the message of Jesus and have chosen to follow him, Lord, I pray that we would also be empowered by your Spirit to be witnesses of Christ and to find and tell someone else of the message. Lord, if there is someone that you've laid on my heart or laid on someone else's heart today, I pray, Lord God, that they would be faithful in praying for and speaking with that person. Lord, if it's someone, if, if it's someone that lives next door to me, if it's someone that is related to me that doesn't know Jesus, if it's someone I work with or someone I have constant contact with, Lord, I pray that I might not be afraid. Give me grace, but give me boldness to say something about Jesus. And I pray the same for my people. Lord God, I, I want to pray today for my daughter, Charity, as she's in the midst of the unrest there in the Middle East. I pray that you give her protection and blessing. And I would pray today, Lord God, that your spirit would be at work in our midst. Lord, I know there are others who have 
um, who have shared requests. There are others who, who maybe have a, a burden on their heart today, but they haven't shared it with us personally. But Lord, they may be carrying that right now. I pray that you'd minister to their hearts as well. So thank you, Lord, that we can bring these requests before you. We know that you answer in your will and in your time. And we pray that we would rejoice in who you are and all that you've done for us. So thank you now. We love you today, O Lord, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next song we like to sing is, In My Heart There Rings a Melody. sent from heaven above, there never was a sweeter melody, tis a melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. I love The third song we like to sing today is, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Guide me, O Thou Great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but Thou Thank you for that good singing. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Receive the benediction and then we'll sing the doxology. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Praise God from whom all